would you also consider wrong and world to only force your ideas onto other people? Your ideas, would it, would it be wrong or moral to violently force your ideas onto other people? Force ideas? Yeah. No. Like if you didn't like what I have to say, you can walk away ostracized. But if I grab you or threaten you with a gun or something, now I'm violently forcing my ideas, right? Alright, so you just told me you have a plurality of non-violent solutions so you apply and use in your day-to-day -day life to solve problems. You have this more integrity against that violence. And as a community of individual people here in Richmond, we're taught that the only way we can affect any kind of change, that we can create any kind of solution is through government. We're taught that the only way to do that is to vote. So we vote and try to, to put our ideas forward for the government and in effect to elect a politician. Mm. That politician, his or early job is to legislate those ideas into law. Mm. And then those laws or ideas are backed and enforced by the police at gunpoint. You now you could take cannabis, for example. If I were to smoke a plant, I'd be kidnapped, arrested, thrown into a cage, a yeah. prison. And when at any point I resist or refuse or try to escape, I'd be met with more violence or something strong. Murder. Mm. Right? And that's the hidden violence of government. The government knows how to stop violence through one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of end use of violence versus the plurality of non-violent solutions that we already apply in our day-to-day -day lives to solve problems. And it's even funded through more violence because at no point can you say, I want to help the poor, but I don't want to fund war. You have no freedom of economic choice. You have to give them your money. You have to give up your property. You have to pay your taxes. Because they have a freedom of economic choice, they wouldn't threaten you to send you to another cage if you didn't pay your taxes. Uh, right, exactly. So that's, so that's the hidden immorality. That's the matrix of the system around under the city council members, the regulations, the joining boards. Um, I guess so that's, so that's basically it. I guess to sum up the summation of the violence that's inherent in government. They only know how to solve problems a single way. That is to the threat of and use of violence versus the plurality of non-violence solutions that we all use in our day-to-day -day lives. Uh, I don't think government really gives us uh, freedom. They give us only, as George Carlin says, they give us the illusion of freedom. Right, yeah, permission. Yeah. You need permission slips. Yeah. You know, so what if tomorrow you they think legalize... You're, yeah. you're voting, really, for who you want, but who you think is like, the moral person wants, or actually they are the, the ones who are um, choosing the, the, the one they right. want. Right, right. They're, they're afraid if we use our real voice, if we reach out and connect with one another and realize we have, we actually have these fundamental values that we share. Mm -hmm. They want us to say our voice is a piece of paper, it's a chat, it's a lever, that we apathetically spend every couple of years looking for parking, waiting in line, and then you hide in a curtain booth and you pull that lever and you step on. People say, who'd you vote for? And people say, oh, how dare you? How, how dare you? That's a personal issue. And then they slap the I vote a sticker on their shirt and nobody talks again for another couple more years, right? And that's why people say change takes so long. You know, so what if tomorrow they legalize marijuana? How long did that take? 75 years. That's not a measure of success, you know, to finally gain one scrap of our freedom, but to have lost so many others in the same amount of time, you know? You know, we're born free. We were not supposed to beg for these scraps. We're not supposed to beg for permission, you know, for licenses, for permits, for pieces of paper. Do you think more marijuana should be legalized? Uh, it shouldn't be legalized or illegal. Just get government control out of it. You look at Portugal. Ten years ago, Portugal decriminalized all their drugs from heroin, cocaine, marijuana, ecstasy, everything. And in the first few years, the using user rates of these drugs went down dramatically. It didn't escalate. People thought, oh, everyone's going to do it, but that's not what happened. If you legalize it, it turns it into a cultural drug, kind of like the Super Bowl, where you will see commercials where you can't have fun without drinking and getting high. That's what happens when you turn it when you legalize it. But you can't make it illegal also because that invites the criminal activity. I mean, yeah. you look at uh, the prohibition invited the mafia to come in. You know, uh -huh. so so you're like with. Um, reducing the like, punishments or uh, oh, so what I'm for it, we can have we can have rules. We just don't need a political rule. Yeah. We can have communities founded on these uh, I mean, basic, uh, on this pr fundamental principles of values. But you have to think of correctness. The government has a monopoly on law. The government has a monopoly on roads, on security, on schools. Uh, we're not allowed to compete or create our own kind of currency. They even have a monopoly on our dollar. you are not allowed to, to, to trade in something else. You're thinking of more flexible kind of laws? Yeah, yeah, a, a, a plurality of laws. Plurality of rules. Yeah. Communities of preferences, right? The government can only force a preference onto one person. Either you like marijuana or you don't. You know, if you like it, we're going to tax you and steal your pro off. Yeah. If you don't like it, then we're throwing you into a Black cage. Or white. Yeah, it's, it's no win, there's no win-win solution. It's not a, it's not a, it's, it's not a two-way street. It's either you like our way or you don't like the way it's tough. But the, you still I mean, have to pay, yeah. Maybe the way they see it is that when they, um, when they make it like more flexible, yeah. some people might use that. Right, right, right. This happens. Uh, what do you mean, what do you mean? Like some people might use that uh, little, little freedom given by right. the government. Don't you agree Well, the thing is, you really want this one freedom. We want all our freedoms. I think that's what happens when you try to inch by inch trying to get a little bit of, at a time. You know, but that, by that time, you know, you'll be an old man, you know, holding a sign still begging for freedom. It depends on the society in the first place. If the society is like, um, it's open-minded, it's, um, 
it won't use that uh, that little freedom used by, uh, given by given by the government. Mm -hmm. So you should you should start first with the society, not with the with the government. Yeah, turn away from the government. Let's turn to our we communities or something. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. If you develop your society, then you can turn to your government and. Uh, Maybe. Well, we'll find out we never needed a government to begin with. We'll find out that we can create solutions ourselves to find solutions to these problems. And, we'll, yeah. and that's what they're afraid of. If we used a real voice to reach out and connect yeah. to each other, we'll find out we never needed a government to begin with. Yeah. And that's why they're afraid of That's why they want to distract us and say our voice is a they're, piece of paper. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. And then we can say we don't need you. We know what we're doing. Right, yeah. We don't need we don't need this monopoly. We don't need your security. You know, unfortunately, like, kind of like Netflix. Last year, we're $10 overnight to try to increase the prices. And the people say, oh, fuck that. I'm going to cancel my TV on. I'm going to go to Hulu. But unfortunately, with government services that they're forced to pay for, you're not allowed to unsubscribe. Even if it's a piece of more unhealthy, you're not allowed to say, hey, I'd rather go to someone else or if you're an entrepreneur enough, create a better service to provide, a better security that's not going to be abusive to the people that pay for their salaries. Yeah. Uh, do you have a question? Yeah, unfortunately, you can create your currency, but it will take a lot of like, work. You get people to convert to that. They are organizations that are doing it, but it's not like. Everybody just because everything built around credit cards and digital money. So right, right, right. It's not a finger snap transition. Yeah, there's there's a guy a few years ago who tried to create his own currency out west. They, they called it the Liberty Dollar. He had a lot of investors, a lot of people backing this project. And just like that, the IRS came in, the government came in, seized all his property, seized all of those assets, and threw it in and throw them in a cage and he did wow. it again. You know, so that's what happens if you try to create. I mean, money is just a commodity. It's another good, right? In 1913, there used to be a variety of different kind of money. And then government said, no competition. You're only allowed to trade with the U.S. dollar. And that's why the value of the dollar has lost over 97% of its value. And that hurts the poor the worst because then you have no incentive to save. Every dollar you hide underneath your mattress depreciates in value, right? So there's so that's that's, that's the monopoly. That's the inherent uh, danger and the violence of the system that we don't have the freedom to do what it is we want to do. We have to ask permission. You kind of control it. You're kind of regulated. Uh, you're, you're taxed it. You need licenses even to cut hair, you know? <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I'm so happy. There's also Bitcoin. Uh, let me pass out uh, some flyers here. We're like, there's a lot of information on here. I don't want to put up your time. There's also Bitcoin is another currency that you're mentioning. Um, it's a, it's a, have you guys heard of Bitcoin? Bitcoin. It's a digital currency. So it's pretty much uh, exposing the way that the government has a monopoly of currency. And there's a new currency out there. It's called Bitcoin. It's, uh, it's a digital currency. It's an internet currency that it's, uh, it's gained more value than the dollar already. Uh, and it's, and it's, there's no taxes on it. People are trading into it. So that way they don't have to pay taxes. And uh, WordPress is using it now. Reddit is starting to use it now. Um, I think. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's completely decentralized. No government controls it. Uh, the government's trying to find ways to shut it down and try to prevent it. But, but they. But they can't. Yeah, it's completely. Uh, it's kind of like Tor. It's a peer-to-peer -peer network, so it's uh, it's pretty much unhackable. Uh, we have a lot of information How's on here too. Uh, How's it work? Uh, you haven't heard of Tor? Yeah, yeah. I haven't used it, but I heard that they made it where like if you were like out of country, you have to say this. You have a lot of people in there. Right. You have to like volunteer service. You have to put the hard drive. Why do you have to the internet without no government? Yeah, get, get Tor's the best theme. You look at NSA, NSA looks up everything that you're doing now. Now that's not a big surprise. You know, so Tor's a great way to kind of hide your IP address without government snooping around in your computer activities. Uh, there's a lot of information I guess we have here on the pamphlet. We do monthly freedom gatherings. It's mostly about philosophy uh, that we talk about and, and, and gather and kind of promote these ideas as a community. Uh, and that's and we'll, we'll talk, I guess Bitcoin's a new thing that just came out. Well, it's been around for a few years, but that's something I'm interested in kind of pushing around here too. Uh, here in Richmond, you know, outside of the monopoly of the state. We don't talk from a religious kind of perspective. Yeah. yeah. Take, sorry, take it. We don't talk from a religious kind of perspective. No, 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 not, no, no, no religious. It's not non-religious, non-political. Okay. You can believe in whatever you want to believe again, right? As long as we're not violently forcing any ideas onto anyone. I don't know. That means rule, we can have rules without rulers. By definition, just means without rulers. And yeah. like anions and cations, archi, like rulers, without yeah. rulers. This is anarchy. Yeah. This is anarchy. Yeah. 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 What does anarchy mean again? It means without rulers. Like an, like anions and cations, without. Archi means rulers, like monarchy, uh, one ruler. An means without rulers. Greek source? Or yeah, Greek source, yeah. So you look at the word definition, it means without all political rulers. You know, like the city council, it tells you you're, like here, they say that uh, you have to buy six chickens, but here you have, you're only allowed to have four. That doesn't make any sense, right? That, that's, a, that's an arbitrary opinion that they force 
Oh, not everyone. Yeah, it's an illusion. Yeah, yeah right. Uh, so that's, I mean, even, even the way that they limit here on First Friday and in the way that people are trying to watch art, you know, the, the fire marks will come in. Sorry, you're only allowed to have 20 people in your building. We're here looking at art. You know, no, what are you doing trying to intercede in people's exchange and voluntary interactions, right? And then that's how the way that they prevent, I guess, creativity. And they hold back even the fire dancers over there. Uh, they're, they're telling me that uh, they need to hire, get more money to hire two cops to watch them now. That's like $500 each, you know? They do this for free. I'm friends with a lot of them, you know? And that's holding them back. And eventually they won't be able to do any of the free fire shows that they do that for us. You know, so that's a lot of different ways that the government victimizes us, prevent us from trying to grow, from trying to, from trying to unite, from trying to to express ourselves, you know, to be free. So, I get it. Yeah? yeah. Oh, that's so cool, man. I'm Cal. Yeah. I'm Carl. Carl? From Iraq. From Iraq, yeah? Oh, yeah. cool. <laughs> nice, nice, yeah. nice. We need this. Yeah? I'm Mark. Mark, pleasure to meet you, Mark. Pleasure nice to meet you. you. We need this in Iraq, but it's going to take like thousands of years. I know. <laughs> what is your name? Lawrence, pleasure to meet you, Lawrence. Can I take I'm Cal. Picture? Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. How are you about You guys are uh, students? Yep, students, yeah. VCU? Cool, cool. Hey, thank you, man. Absolutely, Thanks absolutely. So oh, great. Of course, of course. Thanks for stopping, guys. Party. Today, life, to use violence to solve personal problems. Use what? To use violence to solve personal problems. No. No, and then with the exception of self-defense of yourself and others, would you consider it wrong and immoral to initiate that violence? Wait, no. With the exception of self-defense of yourself and other oh, people, yeah. would it be wrong and immoral to initiate that violence? I think so. Yeah, and then in uh, self-defense is, uh, you know, uh, self-preservation. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, that of yourself and people who can't stop for them for themselves. You know, so the third question would be, would you also consider it wrong and immoral to violently force your ideas onto other people? Oh, definitely. All right, perfect. Then you just tell me in your day-to-day -day life you have a plurality of non-violent solutions to apply and use to solve your personal problems, mm -hmm. and you have this more integrity against that initiation of violence. And as a community of individual people here in Richmond, we're taught that the only way we can affect any kind of change or or try to find any kind of solutions is through government. So people vote. People vote with uh, with their ideas and trying to find Voting solutions. Work, I know, I know, I know. Oh, you're stepping ahead. Very good. Uh, so people vote, but they're trying to push their ideas uh, to try to solve problems and affect elected politicians. The politician, his or only job is to legislate those ideas into laws. And then those laws or ideas are backed and enforced by the police at gunpoint. You know, if you take cannabis, for example, if I were to smoke a plant, I'd be kidnapped, arrested, thrown into a cage, a prison, and if any point I resist or resist or try to escape, I'd be met with more violence and sometimes shot, murdered, right? And this is even funded through more violence because at no point can you say, I want to help the poor, but I don't want to fund war. You have no freedom of economic choice. You have to give your money. You have to give up your property. You have to pay your taxes because you did have a freedom of choice. They wouldn't threaten to send you to another cage if you didn't pay your taxes. And that's and that's the hidden violence of government. The government knows how to solve problems through one way, a singular way, versus the plurality of non-violent solutions that we really apply in our day-to-day -day life to find solutions to our problems here in our community. So what do you think? Uh, what do you have any questions? I mean, they're very spot on. Say like, yeah, uh, voting is funk. I mean, that's and that's and that's the direction they want us to think that that a piece of paper is our voice, that a, that a lever is our voice, that a chat is our voice. They're they're afraid if we actually use a real voice to reach out to our community and find that we already share these fundamental values. So we already share this uh, voluntary interaction of this idea of finding solutions outside of that violence. You know, so I'm pretty much here trying to advocate solving solutions through our community and to turn away from government. Yeah, I definitely agree. Government's got a lot of problems. Yeah. Yeah. Here, how they try and get the fixed government by going to the government. Oh, right. right. They created the problems in the first place. Yeah. Right? It's like trying to infiltrate uh, an organization that's founded on violence and overturn it on violence. It's like uh, trying to join the KKK that's founded on races and attempt to overturn it on racism. But what you can do is socially ostracize them. Like a couple a couple of decades ago, they numbered in the millions. Today, there's less than a thousand left. You know? And it's really hard to recruit the youth. When you push these values forward, they never go backwards. You know, and that's pretty much what we need to do here in Richmond. And that's, I mean, that's why I'm here uh, with my friends, trying to push these values for non-violence, for equality, for freedom, and trying to we're trying to unplug from, from the matrix that is government. Nonviolent solutions you apply and use to solve your personal problems. And you have this more integrity against that violence. And as a community of individual people here in Richmond, we're taught that the only way we can enact any kind of change, any kind of solution, is through government. So we're taught that the only way to do that is through voting. So people vote. People vote to try to create, to, to in effect, uh, they elect a politician when they're trying to create any kind of change. That politician, that politician, his or only job is to legislate those ideas into laws.
But then those ideas are then backed and forced by the police at gunpoint. You know, you could take cannabis, for example. You know, if I were to smoke a plant, I'd be kidnapped, arrested, thrown to a cage, a prison. And when any point I refuse or resist or don't agree with those ideas, I'd be met with more violence or sometimes shot, murder. And at the same time, it's even funny for more violence because at no point can you say, I want to help the poor, but I don't want to fund war. You have no freedom of economic choice. You have to give your money. You have to give up your property. You have to pay your taxes. Because if you did have a freedom of choice, it wouldn't threaten to send you into another cage if you didn't pay your taxes. And that's the hidden violence of government. Government knows all itself problems to one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence versus the plurality of nonviolent solutions that all of us already use in our day-to-day lives to solve problems. You know, the government has a monopoly on law. They have a monopoly on security. They have a monopoly on, on roads, on schools. They're not allowed to opt out, cancer payment, or, or be entrepreneur and provide something better. That's not going to be harmful and abusive to the people who are paying their salaries. Uh, and that's pretty much the direction that I'm trying to go to. You know, pretty much trying to my community and turn away from government to trying to solve our problems here. You know, change doesn't happen in White House in D.C. It doesn't happen in, in countries we've never been to. It happens, you know, at home with ourselves, within our own community, and pushing these values forward. And uh, I guess that's pretty much why I'm here, trying to talk about um, voluntary interactions and trying to talk about community and trying to, to, to unite our community with these values. When you push those values forward, they never go backwards. And that's pretty much in the direction um, I guess I'm here to talk about. Do you have any questions? Uh, no? I okay. understand everything you said. Yeah? All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, 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 not, that, it's not that hard. Yeah, yeah, I don't have an argument against it. Yeah? All right, cool. Well, I'll, yeah, yeah. We'll give you some pamphlets. Uh, so pretty much the definition of a lot of this philosophy is called anarchy. And anarchy by definition means without rulers. We can have rules, there's just no need for political rules.